Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be talking about creating countdown elements using the countdown widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. At the moment, we're on the widgets page where we can see some examples of its use. The countdown widget allows you to pick the format of your time display. So, whether you'll show everything from months to seconds, or if you'll omit one or the other. You can also combine this widget with other elements such as titles, buttons, images, and more. Additionally, you'll have a large selection of fonts as well as numerous other typography options that will help you customize your countdown to match your site design. So, let's see how the countdown widget from the key add-ons for Elementor plugin is used. Head over to the back end and in the Elementor sidebar search for countdown. You'll want to pick the one on the left. It's in our signature color, so you'll be able to tell it apart from other widgets easily. Now drag it over to the right. And here we are. This is the widget's default look and content. To customize it, we'll start with the date option. When you open it, you'll get this calendar and then you can pick the date you want to use for the countdown. There's also this clock underneath, so you can adjust the exact time as well. After that, we have the format option. It lets us pick whether we want to hide the seconds from our view, or hide both the minutes and the seconds. Or finally, hide the months, so our view shows only the dates, hours, minutes, and seconds. I'll leave mine to show all. In the next section, we have the label settings. We can use them to change the text under the numbers, this, by inputting something new in the fields on the left. So you just type in the new word here. These fields are for singular word forms, and here you can switch to add the plural word forms. Then, underneath this, we have the developer tools, where we can display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. If you switch this to yes, you'll get this text, which you'll be able to copy for use elsewhere on your site. Ok, let me put it back so we can carry on. Now, in the style tab, we have several different options. The first is justify content, which lets us pick how the numbers will be spaced within the column. The default setting is called space between, and it creates even gaps, but just between the countdown items. The option called space around evens out the space on both sides of the countdown items. And the option called space evenly evens out the distance between them. And center puts the countdown items in the center and close together. I'll leave mine on space between. Then, the next option is Alignment. It lets us move our content to the left, put it in the center, or move it to the right. And with Digit Color, we can change the color of the numbers in the countdown. I'll use a hex code to change mine and make them practically black. Just a sec. There we go. After this, there's the Digit Typography, where we can change things like the font family for the numbers. Then we can adjust the size. You can also type it in. There is also the weight option. I'll set 500 for my numbers. And we have the transform option, which would have more of an effect on text rather than numbers. And it's a similar case with the style option, as well as the decoration option below that. OK. After this, we have the line height, where we can adjust the, well, line height if we need to. And we have the letter spacing option to separate the digits. Alright. Next, we have label color. So, the color of the text below the numbers. I'll set a hex code for mine so it matches the color of the numbers. Give me a moment. OK. Underneath that, we have the label typography options where I'll set the weight to 500. But I won't go into the other options as we've already seen them. Following that, we have the label margin top option. You can use the slider or type to set a new value. I'll put 14 pixels for mine. OK. The last set of options is item style. We can use it to pick things like the background type. If you opt for classic, you can set a color behind the countdown items. Let me show you. Open the color option. You can use the slider to pick your color. I'll leave it like this for the moment. There's also the option to set an image instead. Just click here to open the media library or upload the background image. OK, let me put it back. Other than classic, we can pick a gradient background. With gradient, you can pick two colors that will blend and create the background. And once you pick your colors using the location option, you can adjust how much space the first color will take up. You can change the second color here. 
and if you want to change how much space it takes up, you can use the location slider here. And if you stick with the linear type, you'll be able to shift the angle where the color blend occurs. But if you change that to radial, you'll be able to pick the origin point of your first color using the options available in this drop down menu. Alright, I'll go back to the classic background type in order to show you some things, specifically the item width, which lets us adjust the space around the countdown items. This is important because not all numbers are the same width. If you look to the right, you'll see that 15 falls within the background color, but 05 before it does not. Because the width of your numbers and text labels can differ, you can use this option to set a space that will encompass everything you need. That way, you can fix the width to something like 200 pixels and be sure it will create a sufficiently wide space for all your countdown items. And we can do the same for the height using the item height option. And depending on your settings, the result can look something like this. Ok, I'll turn this off. And reset the width and height as they still affect the space around the countdown items. Finally, the item margin option lets us adjust the margins around our countdown items. We can increase all sides evenly by using the arrows like this, or by typing in a value. Or we can delink the fields and change any specific parts of the margin, such as the right side for example. You can see how that would look on the right. And that's all. I'll save my work as the countdown element is done. Now, having gone over all the options in the back end, you should now know how to make any and all of these elements from the widgets page. Whether you choose to mirror what you see here or create something unique, that's entirely up to you. You just need to decide which of the possibilities offered by the countdown widget works best with the style and design of your site. I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making elements can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its countdown widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thank you for watching!